I'm sure that $11,000, Ryobi and battery in the same sentence. We'll get some people pretty active in the comments. Should you buy an $11,000 battery ride-on? Hopefully I can help you answer that question. We're gonna have a good look at this Ryobi 42 inch battery ride-on. Now this review is brought to you by Squincher. It's professional grade hydration. If you're like me and you're out there sweating all day, you need to check it out. It's genuinely something I use. Now, as always with Turf and Tools, I'm not just gonna talk about this thing. I'm gonna show you some real-time footage at the end of this talk so you can get a real indication of how it works in the real world. Now, first, let's be clear on what this mower is. I've made a few posts about it on social media and there's been a lot of confusion about it. This is a new product. Ryobi did have a previous range of lead acid battery ride-on mowers. These are the new generation 80 volt lithium battery mowers. Now the easiest way to tell the difference between the two is the older ones have the traditional zero turn controls, whereas this has the interesting joystick. Also, this is the 42 inch version of this mower, which sells for 10,999 Australian dollars. That's in this configuration, and by that I mean you can buy extra batteries for it. I'll get to that later. There is also a 30 inch model and a 54 inch model. So this is smack bang in the middle. Now I've had it for a couple of weeks. It's been on loan from Ryobi. I didn't buy this mower, but I've been able to use it over the last couple of weeks. The bulk of what I did was kind of pushing it to the limits of what you would do with this sort of machine. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to test it on some manicured lawns, but let's be honest, it's gonna get through that sort of stuff with ease. Now, as with all Ryobi equipment, this is a home user machine. It is not a commercial machine. I'm not saying you should go and buy this for your lawn mowing company and run it day in, day out, all day. So we're gonna keep in mind its intended purpose when we're talking about what it does and what it's capable of. Now, let's start with a bit of a walk around. We have a 42 inch deck. It's a pressed steel deck. Now, I'm not sure if you can see, but it has two sets of cross-cut blades here, which means it should be pretty good at mulching. Now, it's got two brushless motors spinning those blades. Combined power of 2,400 watts. Now, it's got three-speed adjustable blade speed, low, medium, and high. Obviously, the faster the blade spinning, the shorter runtime you're gonna get. You do change that blade speed via this LCD touch screen you've got here. Now, it's got 12-step height adjustment going from one inch or 25 millimeters up to four inches or 100 millimeters. Very easy one-handed height adjustment. It's very light. It does have this little safety lock feature because I feel you could bump this quite easily and knock it to the wrong height. That sits in there. Now this is a side discharge machine, but has optional bagger as well. I haven't seen the bagger or tested it. Now, how do we drive it? It's got this very unique intelligent drive system, which is a fancy way of saying joystick. It's fairly intuitive, and after about 15 minutes on the machine, you feel quite comfortable with it. I did give it to a random person that had never ridden a zero turn at all in their life, um, and they took to it quite easily, so quite intuitive. It feels quite foreign to me uh, because I'm used to the standard sort of zero turn controls. Whether you like it or not is just gonna be a personal preference thing. I know they're not the first to have this style of drive on a mower, um, but it, it's good to have options. It's driven by two brushless motors, 1500 watts total. We've got three speeds of drive, which we again change from this LCD screen. I found I spent my time in the low speed most of the time just because of the nature of the grass I was cutting, but it's definitely no slouch. I think it goes up to about 13 kilometers. Feels very speedy. Now, how do you stop it going? Just release the control, that'll stop the motors driving. If you want to stop quickly, it does have a brake. It's kind of like a golf cart style push brake, brake initially, and then if you want to use it as a park brake, just push the top, push it down like that, locks it in. Now the seat is comfy for me. I'm not a massive human by any means, but there's probably three or four inches either side of me before I get to the adjustable handlebars, or adjustable handlebar. This one's adjustable, the one next to the joystick is not. We also have forward and backward adjustability of the whole seat and adjustable seat suspension, which you control via this knob here. Okay, now batteries. This is where it gets a little bit confusing. Now this 42 inch setup comes with two of these 10 amp hour uh, 80 volt batteries. They're like a little briefcase. They're definitely not small. They just slot in the back here. So we've got two of these. There is a space for a third one which I believe is priced at $10,099. Now that seems to make sense, doesn't it? You've got two batteries in there, you can purchase a third, but this is where it gets really confusing. It also comes with two 12 amp hour, 36 volt batteries. One here, I've got one in the other side, the space for two more there. So 
Comes with two 80 volt, 10 amp hour batteries, two 36 volt, 12 amp hour batteries. Has space for one more 80 volt uh, and space for two more 36 volt. I'm not sure of the thinking behind this really. Um, obviously it gives you a bit more run time, but it just seems a little bit too confusing to the average consumer in my opinion. But as always, much smarter people design these things than me. Personally, I would have just preferred the option of another one or two of those briefcase 80 volt batteries and just have one battery platform. Uh, you can run these batteries in your other Ryobi gear. Now charge time for me with that setup of batteries was around three and a half hours from zero to 100% done via this supercharger. And as I said earlier, you can just leave the batteries on board, plug it in, it does its thing. I really do like that about it. I have tried another machine where you've got to take the batteries out, put them on a charger to do it. I think this is a lot more convenient. You can also take out those 80 volt briefcase batteries and charge them on their own, uh, but I don't know why you would. Now, obviously you're gonna to wanna to know run time and unfortunately there's not one single figure because there are just far too many variables. Uh, what sort of grass you're cutting, what height it's at, how dense the grass is, what sort of terrain. Uh, the speed you, that your blades are operating at, uh, your drive speed, potentially even uh, heat comes into it. They do advertise this machine as being to mow up to two and a half acres on a single charge. Uh, I'm assuming that would be with the full complement of extra batteries. If you are buying this machine off maximum potential run times, you're probably gonna run into a bit of trouble because I'm sure those run times are based off manicured grass or it's just taking a little bit off so not high blade speed, probably not high drive speed. In my runtime test that I did, I took this out to a property uh, that had knee high, wispy, weedy, grassy stuff. And I basically had to make double passes because that, that wispy stuff tends to need a couple of passes. Uh, and I got through near an acre with it, with the batteries that are here. Obviously you could buy more and get more runtime. Uh, but in that scenario, knee high, wispy, stuff that I had to double pass. Um, I got near an acre with it. I also did throw it in some very, very heavy stuff. Did this little section that I'll show you here. And because that was very thick, the motors were working overtime. Uh, that ate through about 10% just for that section there. But again, quite overgrown stuff that you really, I wouldn't be buying this machine and wanting to throw it through that anyway. But will it get through it? Yes, absolutely. As always, that is just my experience with it. Yours will vary depending on the multitude of variables when it comes to mowing. Now, how did it cut? It cut as I expected it would. As you know, I generally cut that longer stuff and most of the ride-ons that I've used do need those double passes to get that longer wispy stuff and this was no different. A Couple of small areas where it was tested on just regular grass and kaikuyu, the cut was quite nice, which is no surprise you would expect it to be or you'd want it to be for 11 grand. Now warranty is a very important thing when you're talking about new technology and Ryobi offer a four plus two warranty, meaning four years standard or two years extra if you register the warranty. So if you buy one of these, definitely make sure you register that warranty. Six years is gonna give you a lot more peace of mind. Uh, they actually provide on-site service and repairs and even a free tow service um, if it does break down and needs to be repaired in the factory. And I think that's a real positive for a machine like this that they're standing behind it. I'm really interested to see how these things are gonna go long-term, if they do have any issues and what those issues are. But if you do buy this machine for its intended purpose as a home user with a larger yard or some small acreage, I think you're gonna be pretty happy with it. It's a cool bit of tech. I'm a bit biased because I love the battery tech. Not for the green side of things, um, I just like technology. So where these things are going is pretty cool and the leaps that they've taken over the last few years has been pretty amazing. So I will leave you now with some real-time footage of this thing cutting. Let me know what you think of it in the comments.